honestly, I'm slightly disappointed at this one. I expected it to be really good and just the best thing ever. I was actually looking forward to it. Like, I really was. I planned specifically to watch Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark, and... I, yeah, I, here we are. <laughs> so, this is fun. Let's go! Raiders of the Lost Ark. Not Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. It doesn't actually say Indiana Jones anywhere in the title. It's just Raiders of the Lost Ark. But maybe they'll add it later. I, I need to stop picking this film apart. Let's get on with it. So Raiders of the Lost Ark came out in 1981 and was directed by Steven Spielberg. And I think it was produced or wrote or something by George Lucas as well, who did Star Wars. I haven't yet seen Star Wars. I hope it's better than this. It, of course, stars Harrison Ford, the only Indiana Jones. I'm really glad they haven't remade this. They shouldn't have made a sequel a lot later when he was older, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I like to tell everybody that that's my favourite Indiana Jones film because uh, it annoys them when I do, because apparently it's really bad. But if that one's meant to be worse than all the rest, like, significantly worse, how much worse can it be? I feel like I'm slagging this film off straight out the gate and I don't want to be doing that. I want to actually explain to you why it wasn't what I expected it to be. Maybe I thought it would be better because, again, it's classed as a classic. Maybe that is why. Maybe I just thought, oh, it's going to be a fun adventure. It's, it's Indiana Jones. So am I missing something? I don't know. But let's let's crack on with it and you can comment below and tell me that my opinion is wrong. Okay, deal? It starts out with Indy looking for something. It doesn't show his face at first. You just see, like, the back of him, back of his head, his hat. And then he's going through this, like, jungle, I think it is. And there's these people who are following him. And then one of them just tries to kill him, like, just pulls out a revolver. And he hears the click. So he turns around and whips it out of his hand and just, like, carries on as though it was nothing. So, okay, we're just setting the tone instantly. He's a badass. He can do all of these things, which, now that I think about it, I've got something to say about that later on. He gets into this cave, he navigates his way through these various death traps and finds his way to this golden idol, the iconic scene where he takes it, puts the bag of sand on, he's running away, the boulder's chasing him. I, it's, it's not as good as I expected it to be, maybe because I've seen it parodied so many times, but that happened. He had a friend who, I think it's like young Dr. Octopus from Spider-Man 2, Alfred Molino, I think that's his name. I could be completely wrong. He's there, tries to steal the idol and just gets impaled instantly. He doesn't last very long. Indy escapes all the death traps on the way out of the cave and then he finds he's surrounded by all these locals, like Indians, I think. I don't know. They're just a lot of naked men with bows and arrows and spears. And there's this other guy who's like, oh yeah, thanks. I'll, uh, I'll take the idol now. He's just, he's the bad guy of the film, but it doesn't really explain that. It just, you just kind of, he's there. He's there. Okay, now what? He's the bad guy. So... Get used to that. What's his name? I can't remember. It cuts to Indy teaching at the university. There's this student who's like got love me wrote on her eyelids and she keeps blinking to like try and get his attention and he's like, uh, what the fuck do I do? Probably don't fuck her because, you know, she's a student in your class and it's, it's probably never a good idea if you're a teacher to get involved. I'm going way off topic here. Anyway, his friend walks into the classroom. He's like, oh yeah, I've got some stuff for you. Here you go. The museum will buy these. Also, these two other random guys show up and they're like, oh yeah, we want you to look for this lost ark or something. So he's like, oh, okay, great, an opportunity. Thanks. So he does all that, jumps on a plane and pisses off. He goes to visit this woman. They've clearly got some kind of history there because she punches him in the face straight away. And he's saying stuff like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do those things or treat you this way. It never really explains it. Maybe it does in the sequels, but it doesn't say anything in this film. Things that older movies tend to do, they give you like little nuggets of information, but they never elaborate on them because, I don't know, maybe they were planning that they're making a ton of sequels, but it's just a bit strange how they give very small bits of information. And then if it works, it works. If it doesn't, we can all say, oh, well, we planned it in the sequel. Even if the sequel doesn't turn up, it's, it's an old movie like trick. Anyway, Indy offers this woman like three grand to do something. She's like, oh, I'll come back tomorrow. She takes off her medallion. It turns out she's got the head of this staff of Ra, which is what they're looking for. She puts it on this like, I don't know what it is, some table ornament. Nazis turn up. They want it because this film is set in 1930 something. 38, I think it was. Nazis turn up and they want this medallion. They're like, oh yeah, where is it? 
she's put it on show on the desk and they walk straight past him like, oh yeah, where is it? We'll torture her for information because the head Nazi, I don't know his name, head Nazi, he's got this poker from the fire and he's like going up to her like, give me, give me the information. And she's like, oh yeah, I'm not that kind of girl or some shit. I don't know. She's trying to be the typical badass female, but it just, it just comes across like, I don't give a fuck. She's, She's not very interesting. Anyway, as they're threatening her, Indy shows up and like whips the gun out the hand of us. I don't think he does that, but he just like hits him with something. It's like, oh, let the girl go. And there's a gunfight. And it's weird because it starts out with a gunfight and there's just everything going off and a lot of action. And then it suddenly slows down, like almost stops completely for a simple fist fight. And you're like, okay, it's it's a little off. Like the pacing in this film is, is a little strange, especially in action scenes, because... It just jumps from one extreme to the other very quickly. The whole place is on fire. The head Nazi grabs the medallion off the floor and it like burns the imprint into his hand. You see that later on, but it never elaborates on why that has actually happened. Well, obviously you know why it's happened. He's picked up something metal that has been on fire. And then he just jumps out the window and like sticks his hand in snow. And it's like a weird comedy moment within the action, but it's not intended to be comedy, but it is comedy. It, it's very strange, but anyway, you see that later on he's got the emblem like burnt into his hand because he picked it up, but it never like contributes to the plot in any way, so I don't know why they chose to do that. It's literally just one scene later on where he like puts up his hand and you just see it like burnt into it and you're like, okay, well, that you never see it again. Why did they do that? It doesn't matter. He dies at the end of this film, so it's not going to come back and be like, oh, I'm going to put my hand up and light's going to shine through it. It's... You didn't have to add that detail in. You could have just left it. Indy and the woman go to this other place. This like Caro or Chiaro. I, I don't know. I'm totally mispronouncing it. They go there. Indy meets another friend because he's got a lot of friends. They go to the town. They get attacked by a load of people with swords and they steal the woman and they put her in a basket and they're going through this crowd and there's a load of people with baskets and Indy's like looking through them trying to find which one's her but he finds her a bit too late. They capture her, put her in the back of this truck with a load of high explosives. The truck goes off road, blows up. She's dead. Good. Indy goes to see another guy in this place. They have some more history because he's like, oh, I should kill you right now. I think it's the guy from the start. It's like the, the evil guy who took this globe thing, you know, golden statue. It might be him. I actually don't know. Let's, let's just say it is him. They go and see him. They have a conversation like, oh, I'll, uh, I'll take you to this arc thing. It's like, oh, I'll, I'll just kill you. Whatever. And then Indy pulls out his gun. A lot of people turn the guns on him. Some kids turn up and celebrate and drag him away. And he says some, oh, you'll need more than kids to save you next time. It's basically a lot of scenes where nothing happens except for, let's talk about this bit of information. Let's talk about this bit of information. Here's some more exposition. This is why he's got from this place to this place, because he can't just travel in random locations, right? He's got to have some kind of purpose. You gotta have the map. You gotta have the little red line. You gotta have the da 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 da. The theme song's good, I'll give it that. Then again, pretty much any music made by John Williams is really good. Like, he's done a lot of very iconic themes throughout the years, so bravo to him. Indy goes to see this other guy who then takes him to see another guy, this old man who's talking about the amulet, and they see some writing on the back, and they're both like, oh, they're digging in the wrong place. So great, we know where to go now because it doesn't actually say where they're going. They just know they're digging in the wrong place. Big world out there, but apparently they know where to go next. Indy goes to eat some dates. His friend stops him because the monkey that's been eating him is dead because the pirate's guy, the pirate guy, the one with the eye patch, he's poisoned them. I don't know why. You never see him again after this. It's just while they're in this town, he tries to kill them. But then when they've left, you never see him again. So... I don't know. I don't know. Disposable character number 300. I'm going to be honest. At this point, I actually paused the film to see how long was left. And I realized that I was 50 minutes in and I had over an hour left. And I was just like, I, I'm bored. I'm honestly bored by this point. Nothing has happened. And it's just he's going from place to place. And I thought, hopefully it's going to pick up. I really hope it picks up. Yeah, not quite. Indy goes to this dig site and finds the tomb where the staff goes and he puts it in, puts the amulet on top. It fires this beam down to this place. It it never shows where it is. It just fires it to some model temple or something. So he now knows where the lost Ark is. I was going to call it the Lost City of Ra, but no. The Winged Dragon of Ra? 
The Lost Ark. He escapes this tomb despite the fact he's actually been put in and they use like a rope or just a load of napkins with a Nazi flag on the bottom. He climbs up that, finds the woman. She's not dead. Big reveal. It doesn't make a big deal about it. It's just like, oh, I thought you were dead. And then they start kissing, which is odd. Okay. I guess it was a romantic relationship. And he's like, oh, what do you know? Uh, what they doing to you or something. And she's like, oh, just get me out of here. And he doesn't. He just leaves her there tied up. Indy likes his women tied up. He's into bondage. Probably should have guessed that from the fact he carries a whip around everywhere, but that's uh, that's going to change the way you see this film. Nazi boy shows up. You see his hand that I mentioned earlier on where the amulet's burnt into it. The only time you see it, it doesn't matter. We know who he is. You can tell from his look. Very distinct black suit, hat, circle nerd glasses. I'm thinking more Arnim Zola from Captain America, but yeah, he shows up. And then Indy like recruits all the people to help dig this site because they're just there and you never see him speak to these people. They just they're just there. They just help. Indiana Jones and the string of coincidences. Suddenly this massive storm's happening. It just kind of comes out of nowhere. They find this floor part where it's like it comes up. They dig it up. Look down. Oh, we found the tomb. Why is the floor moving? Drops a torch. It's snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Lower him down anyway. He's like face to face with this cobra because he falls flat. And then he just chucks some petrol on him and burns them all. So I guess he's not that afraid of snakes. He's just, oh, I need to put something in for some reason why he shouldn't do this because he's afraid. But he gets over it very quickly. I'm not even that scared of snakes. But if I went into a pit with a ton of snakes, I would fucking shit myself. Like... I don't care. Like, I'm not that afraid of spiders either, but in the starting scene, when he's got all those spiders crawling over him, I would shit myself. I'd be like, no, no, get them off. No, no, I'd, I'd hate it. I would just hate it. It's just, it just his, his fear. He just gets over it extremely quickly. And it's it's unbelievable. It cuts back to the woman. She's got out. This this guy there. I think it's the same guy from before. I honestly don't remember. I think it's just, there's just, there's a guy who looks similar, but it seems to be everywhere. And I don't know his name, and he's not very interesting. And he tries to, like, get her drunk and gives her this dress and, like, here, put this on. And she's like, yeah, sure, okay. So she does it, and he's watching her in the mirror while she, like, takes her bra off. Very creepy stuff. And he's like, oh, yeah, put this dress on. And she wears it, and then she's suddenly okay with it all. I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's very odd. Maybe he's trying to get her drunk so he can, like, fuck her or something. I mean, there's plenty of other women in the world, but probably not where they are. There's only a select few women, so you you can't be too picky. So that that's a lesson, ladies. If you want to uh, if you want to get laid, go to somewhere like India. You'll probably get your hands chopped off for stealing a Mars bar, if they have Mars bars over there. But I, I am just... I've gone off topic. I'll... <laughs> Oh dear. I'm not mocking your country, India. It's just a joke. It might not even be India that they go in this film. It could be Egypt. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. And I'm not invested enough to look it up. But anyway, just <sighs> next scene. This woman is there. She's like being seduced by this man. She picks up this knife because of course she's not actually drunk. And then she goes to stab him or run away or something. She turns around and runs straight into Nazi boy. Ugh, I'm boring myself just thinking of this film. Fucking hell. Indy and his friend find the Ark and they pull it out and they like take it out of the tomb and then the Nazis see it and they're all surrounded it in like half a second and then they lock Indy in. Well, they throw the woman in like, oh, I won't leave you in there alone. Here's this woman and you're both now locked inside. So enjoy that. This is the point where I realized that guy who was trying to drink the woman under the table was the guy from earlier. And that's only because he repeated a line that he said at the start of the movie, which was something along the lines of, Oh, there's nothing that you have that I can't take. Something like that. And I thought, oh, it's the same guy from earlier. But is that forgettable? And you see him for like 20 seconds previously at the start of the film that you're not going to remember who he is. But that's how I know him by just a throwaway line because that's the only thing he's said all film. I'm obviously exaggerating. Like he says more things than that, but it's just, he's not a very interesting character. Indy knocks down a wall by climbing up this statue, like knocks it into the wall, breaks it down. This woman gets like attacked by scaly boys and um, they find a convenient exit because there's just light coming through. So they somehow climb through that or break through it. It don't matter. They're out. Indy goes to steal a plane. The pilot doesn't see him. Somebody else does. They have a fight. This other guy, this big meathead, is just like, oh, I see people fighting over there. Let me take my top off and just goes in to try and fight him because 
he wants to, I guess. He's just bored and what else are you going to do if you're in the desert except fight people in 100 degree heat? Because why not? Why not? Marion knocks out the pilot, gets locked into the actual pod, like the pilot seat. She turns the plane on by accident. He's spinning in circles slowly. Indy's still fighting this meathead and he's, um, yeah, he's just stood there doing this and the <laughs> Indy just drops to the floor and he goes, uh, and then turns around and the propeller approaches him and shreds him to pieces. And it's so stupid. Like, it just, it's very stupid, which is why I'm, I'm not, I'm losing track of it. Like, I'm trying to remember the film. I only watched it literally directly before I did this review and I'm already forgetting most things about it. Oh, and also Marion shoots a load of people on a truck and murders them because she's fine with that now. There's also some petrol that spills and blows up the plane, but they both get out of there safely. You go see this other guy and his friend's like, oh yeah, thanks for helping me out. You're a true friend, etc. And then the woman's like, she goes up to this guy and like, oh, oh, this is for this. Kisses him on cheek. This is for this. Kisses him on another cheek. This is for something else. Kisses him on the lips. And she's like, thanks. And walks off. It's like, very strange. You didn't really do much. And you just snogged him in front of your friend or your ex. Oh, God. Marion is a massive slag because literally the next scene on the boat, they're just there. And she's like, oh, where doesn't it hurt, Indy? And it's like, oh, it doesn't hurt here. So she kisses it. Don't hurt here. And then don't hurt here. So she kisses him too. What it doesn't show you is the scene where it's like, it doesn't hurt here. And points straight to his dick. And then she goes down and sucks him off because you're surrounded by pirates. So you probably don't want them joining in because they've probably got scurvy and you don't want... You don't want girls with scurvy, or men with scurvy, um, putting their mouths anywhere near your dick. <laughs> what the fuck am I talking about? Then again, Marion would probably let them all share, because she's just, she's open, she's ready, she'll, she'll fuck anything with a pulse, like, just get on the poop deck, and open your legs, and spread them for all to see, and, <laughs> poop deck, <laughs> I'm a child. Nazis turn up and storm the boat somehow. They take the treasure back. Indy somehow swims away to this submarine that's in the distance. I don't know how, but anyway, they both end up surprisingly at the same Nazi camp. It must have been a Nazi submarine. Spoiler, it's probably the one that the Nazis arrived on. But I guess it doesn't say. But anyway, they both end up at the same camp. They have to for the plot. They're picking up the Ark. They take it through the desert. Indy's got this rocket launcher. He's like, oh, I'll blow up the thing. You see, you can't give it to your Fjorda. And uh, they're like, oh, you won't blow it up because it's your life's work, etc. So he doesn't, and they surround him. So they both get captured. So empty threats. I wanted to see him at least shoot a rocket launcher directly into the Nazi's face, but he doesn't do that because it's not an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. I paused it again at this point. We've only got 10 minutes left. We can do this, guys. We can do this. You see them both tied to this post, and then the Nazis open up the Ark, and it's just full of sand, and the Nazi starts laughing. And then things just go absolutely fucking batshit mental. Gas comes out of the Ark and, like, fills the room. Then you've got all these souls that come out, and they're, like, flying around. You see the faces turn to skulls. They're obviously evil. A laser beam comes out and pierces through everybody's chest, and everybody just fucking drops dead. People's faces are melting. You see the Nazi, his face just, like, melts clean off. The other guy's head just blows up. They're both just stuck in this position where they're all just going, Ugh! And they just all fucking die, and then the arc just closes itself. What the fuck is going on? Like, is, is this how you... Oh, we don't know how to end this film. Let's make it so the arc is so powerful that... Anybody, anybody, I'm going to say everybody. Everybody opens it dies. Anybody who opens it dies. I'm that annoyed. I can't even like, just, oh, it, it's stupid. It's bullshit. It's a stupid bullshit thing of we need to end this movie. There's 10 minutes left and it's been dragging on for too long. How can we end it? Let's just have a killer box. Let's have Pandora's box. Because why not? It's, oh. I don't like this film. I don't like it. Indie is free. Woman is free. You see them talking back home. They're talking to those two guys. and like, where's the Ark? Oh, it's being dealt with by top men. Top men. It cuts to a warehouse. You see them packing the Ark into a crate. And they put that crate in a giant warehouse with like a billion other crates. The end. Credits roll. Oh, and also after they're done talking, Marion offers Indy a drink. Which you know what that means. Anal. So let's talk about things I liked. Oh, God. That is a hard sentence to say. I liked the theme song. It was very good. John Williams just, he always does good theme songs. 
So one point for that. I suppose the concept was interesting. Like I like I like the character Indiana Jones, but I don't like the film. And it's just okay. Now now what? What do I do now? I, I can't think of anything else that I like about this film other than just the theme song. And it was okay. Like I can't remember anything about it. There was a lot of things I didn't like about this film. Like the action scenes are just very weirdly paced. The whole film just seems to drag along. Just coincidences happen for the sake of it. Like you can get out of places that you shouldn't be able to get out of. Yes, I know. He's Indiana Jones. He's Dr. Indiana Jones. Dr. Jones calling Dr. Jones. No, I'm not going to get into that song right now. He makes a point at the start of the movie where he whips a guy's gun out of his hand and he's not even facing him. Like you can just hear the gun click behind him and he turns around and hits it with pinpoint precision. But then later on in the film, he's getting beaten to a pulp. Like, is he a tough guy or is he not? It Make your mind up film. I didn't care about the characters at all. It was all boring. Marion's a slag and she's just there for the sake of being there and being like, we need a woman in this film. She's, on she's the only woman in the film, I think. I don't think there's any other actual woman in the film. I liked the little monkey. The monkey then died. That made me sad. I didn't care about the Nazis. I didn't care about the bad guy. I didn't really care about the plot, to be honest. It was just a case of we need this item because the Nazis want it. Okay, can you at least have Robot Hitler? Wolfenstein had Robot Hitler. Just put that in. Might make it a bit more interesting. I mean, it's not as if you're going to like make it completely unbelievable. You've got a box that opens up that melts people's faces. So why not have a Robot Hitler? Just throw it all in there. Throw shit against the wall and see what sticks. Clearly, this is what stuck. So time to rate this film. Honestly, the entire time I was watching it, I was like, maybe a three. And then like about halfway through, I'm like, okay, it's a two, which I think is just it past the time. But as I'm reviewing this, I'm realising that I didn't enjoy it at all and I don't remember a lot of things about it. The only things I remember are like memes and parodies. Like you've seen it in Family Guy and various other things like that. You've seen the memes where the guy's face is melting and just you've heard the stories of when he shoots that guy in the town because he's not feeling very well. Harrison Ford... Harrison's? Harrison Ford is not feeling very well that day so he just shoots the guy because it's in character with Indy. Apart from that, I couldn't really tell you anything else. I'm going to forget this film very quickly. I can't really tell you anything else that happens except for things that keep cropping up on the internet. So I'm sorry to say this, guys. You are not going to like this rating, but you've probably guessed it from the, the amount I'm slagging this movie off like crazy. I'm going to have to say that Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark is a forgettable experience. I'm sorry. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in myself. I wanted it to be good. I thought it would be good. I thought it would be better, but I don't know. I don't know. Am I missing something? If I am, please tell me. Please tell me what you thought about this film. Or you can jump into my Discord. I actually have a movie tab in there where we can talk about films. I would happily have a full conversation with you about why you like this film or don't like this film and tell me why. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Link for that is down below. I also stream on Twitch two or three times a week. The link for that is also down below. You can follow me on there if you want to. You don't have to. It's a free country. Unless you live in India and then it's not a free country. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I hate to ask this, guys, but if you could leave a like on this video, if you did like it, it does really help the channel out. It helps me get noticed a bit more. And I've noticed that because people are liking my videos, the views are starting to climb up. So that's good because I want people to hear my opinion and hate me because I hate Indiana Jones. So... I'd, I'd love that to happen. If you could leave a like on this video, guys, that would be very much appreciated. That about wraps it up for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry it wasn't the rating you expected, but this is my opinion, and this is what this video is. Until next time, guys, see you later. Oh my God, there's a ghost. And she's a doctor. Where the fuck are you going? You're about to... Oh, she's... <laughs> okay. Look at him. He's mega panicking. Why is he panicking so much? Oh, he's just... He... he ran over to the computer in a panic because he wanted to play Sims. Get off Sims and watch... Watch your... Your baby being born.